Up next, we're going to have Joel Eichley with the NDSU Extension Service. He is a weed control specialist. He's going to talk about uh, weeds that are common in wheat and their control. Give us a little bit of update from 2020. All right. Good morning, Paige. Let me just go ahead and start now, even though it's a little a couple minutes early. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, happy to get on here and talk about some of our, our recent research uh, results about weed control and wheat. And so that's what I'm really going to go through today. Um, have four new products on the market this year. I'm going to share some data from, from Dr. Kirk Howitt from the 2020 growing season. Talk about a little bit of our problematic weeds and some things we can do to control them. And then uh, try and keep this all pretty truncated, about 20 to 25 minutes. So the first thing I need to address is the number one question, the uh, the extension season so far is where is the weed control guide? How do I get it? Normally I would have rolled up to this median and with a couple hundred just trying to hand them out. Uh, but we do still have plenty available. Uh, so if you're out there in the state, you should be able to stop by your county extension office to pick up a copy. Uh, if, if you're not able to do that, if you call the phone number there on the screen, they're available. We have plenty here on campus. Uh, agents who are listening, we have plenty on campus, so we're not going to run out. So if you start running low, feel free to call Blaine and, and ask for some more copies. If you want the, the guide electronically, you can either Google the North Dakota Weed Control Guide or I provide a QR code here on the screen that will bring you right to the website where it's got the guide for this year and, and a couple of, of uh, supplemental items as well. Now I have this QR code available again at the end if anyone misses the, the chance to scan it right now. Okay, it's so one of the first things I want to talk about is, is there's two new products on the market um, in Pixaro and Widar Match that have this haloxfen methyl, this haloxfen active ingredient. So if you've ever used or heard about Elevore, this is haloxfen is, is an Elevore, uh, but it's also in a couple of other products now in the wheat market. So we've had Culex for a couple of years. And the two new ones that we can use that have this active ingredient are Pixaro and Wider Match. So a little bit here about Pixaro. Uh, so this is uh, fluoroxapir and haloxfen. So it's essentially a, a premix of Starane and Elevore. The use rate is six fluid ounces. We can apply it from two leaf through flag emergence. Uh, the weed spectrum here is, is pretty limited what we're going after, but it's for mainly for kosher, wild buckwheat, and mare's tail. So again, we're getting our, our star rain activity on kosha, and then Elevore is really added into some of these products going after mare's tail control specifically. Uh, Horseweed is the other name you know may know about mare's tail. To increase weed control spectrum with Pixaro, we typically want to add in 240 MCPA and, and a grass herbicide to pick up some of the other weeds that these two products uh, may not get. Water match is essentially wide match, and then tank mixing in that Elevore. And so the use rate here is 14 fluid ounces, uh, the same growth stage as Pixaro to leaf through flag emergence. Uh, the weeds we're going after here are basically the same weeds that we're going after with wide match, but again, we're, we're throwing in some more mare's tail control uh, with that elevore. And again, we will, we'll need to tank mix it with some other herbicides if we want to increase our spectrum beyond uh, a select few weeds. So what I want to show here is some data from, from Dr. Howitt's program looking at uh, this ingredient, haloxifen methyl, and some of the different uh, potential mixes that are out there. And so we're going to have a series of slides here with the different weed represented by a different colored bar. Along the x-axis on the bottom, we have, uh, starting on the left, Elevore by itself. If you see the plus sign with the herbicide, that's Elevore tank mixed with these different herbicides. And the three commercial available premixes, Culex, uh, Pixaro, and then wider matches over here on the right side of the screen. So the first weed we're showing here is Venice Mallow. So if you were to use Elevore by itself, uh, get about 90% control. Uh, other products are somewhere between 82, 83% and up to that 90% control. So all pretty equivalent with the commercial premixes as well as with uh, some of these experimental uh, tank mixes that, that we were looking at. Wild buckwheat, uh, kind of a similar story here um, with, with some of the products. So Elevore by itself, 90%. Uh, if we add in Harmony, which, which will help us with buckwheat anyways, we do get a, a bump here. The wider match is over here on the far right. And then Culex and Pixaro, all pretty equivalent to Elevore by itself. 
In this case, we did see some antagonism and loss of control when we tank mixed that Elevore product with AIM, uh, 2,4-D, and MCPA. Now we're looking at the green bars, which are common lamb squarters. Uh, Elevore by itself, a pretty good product on, on lamb squarters uh, in this research. Um, as far as the tank mixes, wider match, uh, again, pretty good on common lamb squarters. We did see loss with Pixaro, and then definitely we saw uh, a lot lower control of lamb squarters with Culex. So we, we've seen this on the occasional weed, uh, sometimes with the pigweeds and, and lamb squarters specifically, that we can see some antagonism on the control of those weeds in Culex. Uh, it seems the florazolam component of Culex is antagonizing the control of Elevore. We're not seeing that to the same severity with some of these weeds uh, with Pixaro and Wider Match, though. Now, if we just combine all of these uh, weeds together, just on one slide, that's what we're doing here. So again, the three weeds together, 90 to 99% to control uh, with that this Elevore product by itself. Uh, pretty equivalent with Pixaro, a little bit lower, uh, especially on the Lamb's quarters. Wider match, again, uh, the other premix that we have available, pretty equivalent, uh, a little bit lower on, on the Venice Mallow. And then, of course, with, with Culex, same neighborhood for Buckwheat and Venice Mallow, but it's uh, lamb's quarters where we're really seeing that drop off in control. Okay, so another new product on the market this year is uh, Luxor A and B. So this is a co-pack that's sold by Bayer. So it's two different uh, products you'll be working with. The dry product is uh, Tribenuron, which is Express, and then a liquid product, which will be Varro, which is uh, Thion Carbazone. So the same use rates that we would have for Express by itself and then uh, Varro by itself. But again, this is a co-pack, so you'll mix these together in the tank. From one leaf to prior to jointing. And then here we're going after several annual broadleaf weeds, uh, Canada thistle, and then some, some grasses as well. So now some more research from Dr. Howitt. And, and what we're showing here is on the far left, we have Luxor A and B by itself. And then we were evaluating different tank mix partners for Luxor A and B. So Luxor A and B with, with Starine Flex, with 2,4-D, and then with various combinations as we go to the right side of the screen. Now the weed spectrums here are green bar is still common lamb squarters. The, the red bar is still wild buckwheat. The yellow bar now is common ragweed. So this Luxor A and B pretty good on, on common lamb squarters, uh, a little bit weaker on wild buckwheat. And then it's, it's certainly not going to be a ragweed product by itself. But then once we start adding in some different uh, tank mixes, including if we go here to the right side of the screen, uh, these right four tank mixes tend to be pretty consistent and give us 90% control or greater of, of these three weeds when tank mixed with Luxor A and B. So some potential uh, tank mixes out there to give us a, a wider spectrum on some of our problematic weeds. Uh, we also had a research trial specifically looking at control of Canada thistle with Luxor A and B. So again, here's the same tank mixes on the bottom part of the screen, including Luxor A and B alone. The green bar is now three weeks after treatment, and the red bar is, is seven weeks after treatment. And so the good news here is, is again, with, with the express there in Luxor A and B, we're getting very good control of Canada thistle. And then uh, also pretty importantly is any of these tank mixes we evaluated, uh, pretty equivalent control, and, and certainly we did not see any loss of control with any of these tank mixes. So that'd be a good thing moving forward if, if you have a Canada thistle problem. Uh, the other thing, uh, with this particular research trial, there was one replicate uh, in the trial that there was some sow thistle in there. And, and that one replicate, the, all these treatments looked pretty equivalent for control on sow thistle as they did on Canada thistle. So trying to find a sow thistle site this next year to really tease this out and see if it's if it's something real we're looking at, but uh, could be a pretty decent product for sow thistle as well. All right, so the last new product on the market I want to discuss this morning is Husky FX. And so we've had Husky for a number, number of years now, which is uh, Vermoxanil uh, plus uh, pyrosulfatol. And now with the FX, the FX is fluoroxapir, so we're adding in some, some uh, starane to Husky. Use rate is 13.5 to 18 fluid ounces. Uh, the, the current marketed use rate is actually right in the middle there at 15.5 fluid ounces. 
but I'm going to show you some data of, of the benefit of using the, the full 18 fluid ounce rate rather than that 15 and a half fluid ounce rate. Uh, application timing up to flag emergence. And then uh, we're really going after most of our annual broadleaf weeds here with this product. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is we really do want to target two to four inch weeds. Uh, we can start seeing some struggles with this product once we get much larger than four inch on, on some of our broadleaf weeds. All right, so now we have a couple of different products we're looking at here. Here's this, this uh, standard 15.5 ounce rate of Husky FX, the 18 ounce rate, and a couple of different competitor products uh, at their standard use rates as well. What we have here is the green bar is wild buckwheat, and then the red bar is Venice mallow. And so both, both the 15.5 and the 18 fluid ounce rate are, are, are pretty good pretty, and pretty equivalent for the control of these two weeds. And then if you look across, uh, uh, just comparing to some of the commercial standards, all basically over 85% control, but the ones over 90, 95% control would be the Husky FX combos, uh, Talonor, and then Carnivore. The, the bars now, green bars now represent water hemp, and the red bars now represent common lambs quarters. <clears throat> And then one thing I do want to point out is, is water hemp is becoming a much bigger problem for, uh, for wheat in the eastern part of the state. I know out west there's not much, if any, water hemp that's, that's given any, anybody heartburn out there yet. So uh, hopefully, if you don't have water hemp, what we can also do is pretend like these green bars are ALS resistant red root pigweed or pal amaranth. Because if we have a chemical that works well on water hemp, it's going to work on the, on the pigweeds we're used to dealing with as well. So if you don't have water hemp, just replace this, uh, this green bar with pigweed in your mind. If you do have water hemp, a much more difficult weed to control, uh, here, here's the research results we're looking at. So both the 15.5 and 18 ounce rate, pretty good on both of these weeds. Uh, again, Talonor and, and Carnivore tend to be uh, pretty equivalent. And then still near 90% control with the other products. So all, all looking pretty decent uh, for control of, of those two weeds. I did want to just pause here and, and take a minute to talk about some of these water hemp issues that we're seeing in small grains in the east, uh, particularly with the virtual program. Don't there may be some people uh, from the eastern part of the state where water hemp's a major issue, and I want to talk a little bit about what we're seeing in wheat. So the other reason I bring this up is that if and when water hemp or the other one, Palmer amaranth, gets established out west, uh, we've always thought of wheat as a pretty good crop that's competitive with these pigweeds mainly because they emerge pretty late in the season. So if we can plant early and get good stand establishment, uh, we have getting a pretty good head start against controlling the late emerging pigweed, such as water hemp or palmer amaranth. What we've seen in, in the southeast part of the state and certainly in the Red River Valley the past couple of years and in 2020, we had a, a lot of these issues was water hemp escaping whatever weed control program was used in wheat and becoming quite, uh, quite prevalent at harvest time. And for the most part, what, what we're dealing with here is, is we can have some poor stands uh, as we get closer to maturity and that canopy starts dissolving uh, in the wheat field. Uh, late emerging water hemp or water hemp that emerged and, and just kind of hung out there in, in the shade in the canopy is actually able to grow and, and become problematic and, and interfere with some harvest. So just kind of a, a, a warning sign there that if you have water hemp or palmer, uh, we, we certainly can see them start to become problematic in wheat. And the weak link that we're really seeing uh, in the East is management of these pigweeds post-harvest. So whether we, we cut off the pigweeds at harvest and then do nothing afterwards, we still have plenty of time to branch, regrow, and go to seed. And we've also documented water hemp emerging and going to seed in the time after wheat harvest and before a freeze. So again, uh, just nothing problematic out west yet, but uh, another reason uh, certainly that we want to keep water hemp and palmer amaranth out of out of western North Dakota. All right, so going back to some more data with the Husky FX products. So again, just uh, the, the same chart here with control and the different products on the bottom. Now this is uh, focusing in just on kosher. Now the bars represent uh, green is seven days after uh, treatment. Red is 14 and the yellow is 35 days after treatment. And so here's where we really start to see the benefit of using uh, 18 ounces of Husky FX compared to 15.5. If 
you look at the yellow bars, which is that 35 days later, uh, we're, we're going from about 88% control up to between 95 and 100% control. So much more consistent, uh, better control um, on kosher with this higher rate compared to that 15.5 ounce rate. Showing what this looks like in picture form. Uh, so again, I did mention that we're, we really, with this product, want to target two to four inch weeds. This particular trial, we were targeting four to six inch kosher to tease out some of these differences. When we look at the 15.5 fluid ounce rate of uh, Husky FX on the left, you can see the, the certainly the bromoxanil and uh, pyrosulfatol uh, in action, um, really bleaching out the the top of the kosher plant, but you can see plenty of, of green kosher tissue underneath the, the top part of that plant. The 18 fluid ounce rate did a pretty good job of completely burning back and killing these plants. And we did not really see much regrowth or seed production out of this, out of this higher rate. And then comparing that to, to some of the standards here, so wide match or weld, uh, again, we really do a good job of curling up the kosher, but with these, with these larger kosher plants, did not get complete kill. And then with both bison and with Talonor on these larger plants, certainly burned off the tops, but did still have some green tissue underneath. So again, these can be pretty good products on kosher, but we do want to target the smaller kosher. If, if we get much taller than four inches, uh, we do start to see some failure and regrowth. Want to switch gears and, and talk just a little bit about wild oat. And so one of the things that Dr. Howard looked at this year is, is some tank mixes with Axial Bold uh, for wild oat control. And so now what we have here is, is Axial Bold all by itself on the left, and then a couple of different tank mix partners uh, on, on the right side of the screen. Green bar is wild oat control, and the red bar now is, is actually wild buckwheat control, which was also present in this trial. And so the main takeaway here is that we were on, on a susceptible wild oat population getting pretty good control with Axio Bold uh, with several of the tank mixes as well. But where we did have Talonor in the mix, we did have a, a loss of control on wild oat. So something to consider if you're using Axio Bold or specifically going after wild oat, uh, these Talonor tank mixes did cause a loss of control on that wild oat population. Of course, it did give us the best wild buckwheat control. So again, Talonor, pretty good product on broadleaf weeds. And if that's your driving weeds, then, then certainly a good product that fits uh, many acres. Okay, gonna talk a little bit here about, um, about some of our problematic weeds and then uh, a couple of miscellaneous things and finish up the presentation. So first be narrowleaf hawksbeard, of course, be, uh, been a problem for a number of years now out west and, and isn't really going away. And so if we just look at Hawk's beard control in general, we want to re remember that, uh, that this is a winter annual weed. And so the best time to control Hawk's beard would be in the fall. And so a couple of different programs we can use here would be uh, uh, glyphosate uh, based programs, but really want to focus on Hawk's beard control in the fall. I apologize for that red laser there. It must be a pre-recorded part about this slide. Uh, then in the spring, so if we did got nothing done this past fall, in the spring we can either use glyphosate or glyphosate plus sharpen would be a better option. And that's, uh, we really want to target the rosette stage. Once it starts to bolt, then it becomes more problematic to control. In crop and wheat, our best options are Affinity plus 2,4-D, Gold Sky, or uh, Star and Flex in 2,4-D. <laughs> couple uh, pictures here with, for foxtail barley control. Again, a, a perennial problem, and it's a perennial weed that we face as well. Again, uh, similar to hawksbeard, which is a winter annual weed, with foxtail barley, our best time to control it is in the fall. And with a fall applied glyphosate, we can do a pretty good job. Now, this is 32 ounces of uh, Roundup Power Max or an RT3 equivalent. So we do want to keep these higher rates of glyphosate when controlling foxtail barley. What I'm going to show here in the next couple of slides is, is from Dr. Jenks' research. We know that several people are starting to add in uh, some metribuzin in the fall to control some of our uh, winter annual broadleaf weeds. So it increase our broadleaf weed control in the fall. We can see antagonism with, with uh, metribuzin uh, on glyphosate, specifically on grass control. 
Um, and we'll see this similar with glyphosate and atrazine when we get into some challenging conditions, either on a perennial grass weed or in cool conditions. And so just showing that if, if your main target is foxtail barley in the fall, where we don't want to mix in that metribuzin to pick up some of the small uh, winter annual broadleaf weeds. So here, here's these same two, two treatments a little bit later on the, the following spring and just showing that we, it almost looks like we didn't even apply anything because of, of the foxtail barley growing out of, of this application. Come harvest time, the, the year following that fall application on the left here now is, is untreated, no herbicide applied. And the right is this glyphosate plus uh, metribuzin tank mix in the fall. So you can see compared to the untreated, we did clean up some of the foxtail barley, but certainly not, uh, not a field we want to be harvesting uh, due, to, due to the amount of foxtail barley pressure in there. Okay, just for the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and uh, skip these two slides, just some more of Dr. Howard's data on, on some volunteer crops control in wheat. Uh, something else I wanted to focus on before the end is some of the resistance testing that Dr. Jenks has conducted over the last four years or so. And so from 2016 to 2019, he has screened 153 wild oats samples from across the state for resistance. And in general, what he's found is uh, about 38% resistant to axial, 76% were resistant to puma. Our group two herbicides, uh, about 72 to 87% of these uh, populations were were resistant. Raptor or beyond, about half the population screen were resistant. Uh, quite a lot of resistance to Assure too, and then a few populations were also resistant to Select. So again, I do, do want to just reemphasize this isn't reflective of all the populations across the state. These are of course targeted uh, screens. So someone had had an issue with these wild oats and sent them in. Uh, but here's here's certainly some of the results we're seeing for over 153 different samples. Green foxtail now on the right, well, which is our, our weed of the year in the weed guide this year. So if you want to read more about green foxtail, uh, go to the last page of the weed guide once you have it, and it is the weed of the year. But resistance screen over the past couple of years are, are group one herbicides, anywhere from 43 to 62 percent of those populations were resistant. Uh, 11 to 17 percent for our group two herbicides raptor or beyond no resistance found yet assure to about 40 percent resistant uh, we did find one population resistant to select and so far nothing to glyphosate so just uh, just want to give an update there on on what resistance we're seeing across the state and, and some of our grasses one final thing i want to hit on here is pre-harvest weed control uh, so certainly with, with the water hemp failures in the east, and then, of, of course, uh, always have some, some problematic fields in the west. And the past couple of years, we've gotten uh, some June and July rains that have made some fields a little bit dirty uh, come harvest with, with things like kochia. Just want to reemphasize that on page 19, the weed control guide this year are the options we have available uh, for pre-harvest weed control. I bring this up because we've gotten several uh, phone calls about people wanting to use gramoxone pre-harvest in wheat. Just a reminder that that is not a labeled application for pre-harvest weed control. And some of these pre-harvest type applications are, are coming under increased scrutiny. So we certainly don't want to uh, use a, a product like gramoxone that is not labeled in a pre-harvest situation. Okay, so I wanted to finish here, uh, plug a, a podcast if you're into podcasts. I've started this podcast with my colleagues at Kansas State and University of Missouri. Uh, we call it the War Against Weeds podcast. And so we're, we're basically taking a, a closer look at, at some weed management and weed science things. Uh, episodes, uh, weekly episodes that we post on Wednesday. We have uh, five currently posted. So if you want something to listen to about weeds and weed control, uh, certainly take that take a listen. It's available on on Spotify, uh, I, iTunes, Google Play, whatever you like to listen to your podcasts. And with that, I'll finish here uh, and, and take any questions that may have popped up, but here's uh, contact information, uh, phone number, email. If you're on Twitter, there's my Twitter handle if you want to follow me. And again, here's that QR code I mentioned um, if, if you want an electronic version of the weed control guide. And so Paige, that is what I had. Um, Thank you, Joe. Uh, we're waiting for any questions to come in. So participants, if you are wanting to ask a question of Dr. Eichley, please throw that question into the Q&A box right now and we'll get it answered. 
And I'll just leave this up for another second for the QR code if people want that, and then I'll give you control back.